ordinarily a clock radio would be special enough that it would deserve its own video because I try not to pick up the junk and I usually I try to pick up some some stuff that's got interesting unique features enough that it would make its own good video but there's only so much you can say about a clock radio and there's only so many examples of a clock radio that you can get before you start to have some repetition and so it is that these three are just going to get shown off in this video because I figure I can make a longer video and talk about all of these in one video more effectively than I can in separate videos because they just end up being short videos because there really is just nothing special about them pay no mind to the prices that you see I guarantee you I did not pay $7.99 for that and I never would I definitely didn't pay $4.99 for this and I didn't even pay $2.99 for this one no 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 what actually ended up happening was these two were bought at one store and this one was at a different store but these two I brought them up to the cash and said you know what I don't want to pay this price for either of these if you can lower the price I would appreciate it because there are some things about them that we're going to talk about that I I just didn't think it was worth the manager came out and took a look at them and said you know what how about two ninety nine for both of them <laughs> I kid you not so I, I, I paid for these and took them out of the store fast and they could even change their mind because I didn't want them to change their mind. That, that's a pretty darn good deal, if you ask me. Even if they're just boring, wood grain finish, red LED clocks. Okay, let's start taking a look at these. The first unit here is actually a Sonic branded. Let's see if I can turn the video light off if that'll show up a little better. Sonic branded clock radio. Nothing all too special. There's your tuning band. AM, FM, electronic digital clock radio. It's a little dirty. There are your various switches. This two position alarm down there is actually for wake to, from what I could tell from just a quick test, it is wake to radio or wake to, wake to buzzer and radio. I'm not quite sure why they do both, but they do. There's your model number. CR100B, made in China. Ew. This fits the definition of crap. But at least it's, you know, late 80s to mid to late 90s crap and not modern crap. It does actually support a backup battery. There's supposed to be a door there, I think, but it, it's long since gone. Oh well, it doesn't really matter. You can get a look at the display here. Just a standard red LED display. Not much to it at all. So let's go ahead and have a band scan. Turn the radio on. Turn the volume up. I don't even want to know what that is. Okay, let's switch it over to AM. And he liked that situation. Swing and a miss. Down goes Donaldson on that strikeout. Okay. Can change whenever. I mean, he, he's 
So here, as you could tell, just a thoroughly unexciting little radio experience there. I'm going to go ahead and set the alarm and we'll have a listen to the alarm. I'm not sure if you can hear the hum, but the radio is also on. Alright, so there's your Sonic. Here is the first of the two GEs. This one is model number 4624B. Wood grain finish on polystyrene made in Malaysia. The date code seems to be worn off, unfortunately, so I can't really read that. Also has, oops, sorry about that. I was going to say the date code's kind of worn off. Even if I don't have the light on, I can't see it, because I can't see it in person, so. It's also got a slot for a backup battery. Um, wood grain finish is only on the top. The sides are just bare and plastic. I do wonder, like, this texture at the back. It's actually kind of cool. There are your controls on the top. Funny enough, it's got one of those style volume controls. It's, I think it's the only clock radio I've got with that style. I almost bought a Panasonic that had the same style, uh, had the same style knob there, but that Panasonic was just way too expensive. And they weren't willing to knock the price down. So let's go ahead and have a listen to the radio. As you might be able to tell, it's rather quiet and tinny. There's no bass to speak of. I'm not sure if there's a dirty switch, but I don't think so. Tuner also seems to stick a bit. So that kind of sucks. Let's go over to AM. Seems to stick mostly in the upper range of the band. Okay, right, let's go ahead and have a listen to the radio. That's kind of hoarse sounding. <laughs> That's odd. <laughs> I don't know what to think of that. One other thing that I thought it would be interesting to point out is the presence of an AM indicator. You see, clock radios of the time seem to do all kinds of different things with these indicators. I've seen some that have AM and PM. I've seen some that have just AM, like this one. And I've seen others that have just PM. Any others still that aren't even labeled and expect you to know exactly what it is. This one here, the Sonic, I didn't mention it, it's got a PM indicator, but no AM indicator. Whereas this one's AM. I wonder why they decided to do it all their own different way. Because that's kind of odd, actually, if you ask me. Alright, so that's it for this GE. Let's move on to the last one. Here is arguably the most interesting of the bunch. This is a General Electric model number, what does that say, 7-4640B. There's your date code. I think it's the oldest of the bunch, if I had to guess, because it's also got no provisions for battery backup of any kind, unless it's internal, which I don't think because I don't see anything in there in the limited amount of space I can look. 
The case is also the largest out of any of the clock radios. I almost wonder if maybe this is a flip clock chassis that's just been, you know, changed a little bit, you know, for adding radio and LED and all that kind of stuff. Just been, you know, modernized. Modernized flip clock chassis because it certainly it certainly does have it's it looks the part. We'll say that. And funny enough, this one also does it differently from all the others and has both an AM and a PM indicator. How's that for ironic? Well, that's not really ironic. Another thing is that all of the uh, controls are located in this little tiny area here, as opposed to on most clock radios where they're spread out across the top, or on the sides as well. This one doesn't do it that way. This control is right here. It's got a combination tuner and volume. I found that to be rather interesting. The tuner is kind of stiff, but it does actually work, unlike the other unit. There's your band switch. I don't believe it's on any other switches. Oh wait, yes it does. It's got uh, a dimmer switch. So there's it's on its brightest setting and on its dimmest setting. Notice something missing. I think you'll catch it right off the bat. That's right, there is no colon on this particular clock radio. I don't know why there's no colon. Maybe it had a colonoscopy or something. <laughs> you know, failed, failed colon surgery or something, but it doesn't actually have a colon. Which I thought was rather odd. Let's just go ahead and have a listen to the radio. Make sure that the volume's turned off first. So you can see it's actually got a tuning light. I believe there are two grain, there's supposed to be two grain of sand light bulbs in there and only one of them actually works because you can see it gets dim towards that side of the control there. Called Kocho. I was a student going to the high school. I was... Celle de Lulu Hughes et de Eva Avila. La primera. Lucia Perle. If I didn't, uh, if you didn't watch, I don't know if I've uploaded it, but I, I recorded a video of a Citizen Clock Radio, and I talked about how much the, the band is just crappy. See, like this, like what in the world is this supposed to be? I better stop this before I get my video muted. So unfortunately, as it turns out, it seems that. The band switch on the side is slightly broken, and I can't actually actuate it. So that's kind of unfortunate. I was hoping to maybe try some DXing with this unit and see if it could actually pick up anything rather decently. Maybe it could. But oh well, you can't have everything. It's still a pretty decent clock radio. Let's go ahead and have a listen to the alarm. This ought to be interesting, because I have not listened to the alarm yet. Yes, I know the time changed. It's got a dirty switch on the top. That's interesting. It does some really goofy stuff. Oh, the snooze button does work. I was a little concerned that the snooze button didn't work. <laughs> But that, that's, that's really goofy. I don't know what the deal is with that. 
but it looks like I got a goofy alarm clock over here. That's not bad. It always uh, helps to have a little bit of, you know, uniqueness in your collection, even with something that's otherwise rather boring. The wood grain does actually extend to pretty much the whole unit itself. I wonder if they say what kind of, uh, no, I, I guess this predates that. I was going to see if they said what kind of finish it was. I did not pay anywhere near $7.99 for that. In fact, you probably won't believe me when I tell you that I got this for $2.99. But I showed it to the guy and talked about, uh, the cashier, and talked about a couple of the problems that it had. And he said, you know what, let's go over here and plug it in. And uh, I didn't realize at the time that it had this, two, this uh, dimmer switch, and he didn't either. So this is what the display looked like when I first got it, and I thought there was something wrong with it. I originally wasn't going to pick it up at all because of that problem, but I decided, you know what, I'll give him an offer. And he said, you know what, that's broken, the volume switch over here is broken, the tuner's kind of stiff, how about two ninety nine? Why not, eh? So, again, I paid for it and split faster than a banana. <laughs> Oh, that was a strange joke. Actually, I didn't even think about it until the last second. But there you go. Here's your general electric clock radio. And a couple of other clock radios that otherwise would be completely uninteresting to be making a video of them on their own. And uh, this is CP666 signing off. I hope to see you next time. Till then. Oh yes, and before I wrap up the video, a couple of the other scores that I got, actually all the other scores I got, I, could, I couldn't tell you what the stores were exactly, because I really don't remember, and I don't feel like going through the receipts, because there are a lot of receipts. I hit a lot of stores today, believe me. It seems as though one of the stores, at least, had somebody donate their entire blank tape collection, because there are six of the Sony 60-minute high fidelity normal bias cassette tape still sealed in the package. Uh, I paid $3.99 total for all of those. And last but not least, some more stuff to play on the show. I'm glad they didn't take into consideration the price that this originally sold for when they priced it, although for the most part these kinds of things are you know, relatively straightforward, 99 cents a piece or 49 cents a piece or whatever. Polytel Super Tracks, including a couple of uh, favorites. You can get a look at the track listing there. Hopefully, mostly. I apologize for the shaking. I'm not sure if the digital image stabilizer will do much to solve that or not. It might, considering I don't, I'm not zoomed in. Even if only a little bit.